Hey everybody, it's Paul from Alexander Knife Sharpening Laser Engraving. What I want to talk to you about today is my new 3D printer and how well it has worked in combination with my laser engraving that I do and even some other things just around my house. Now first off, I want to say I was kind of holding off on doing this because as you guys know, when I find something that I really like or a company I really like, I will often try and build a relationship with them, see if I can get you guys a discount, see if I can get a discount code, see if they have an affiliate program for helping the channel make money. And I have tried multiple times to reach out to Bamboo Labs with zero success. I don't know why, but they just do not get back to me. So either they're absolutely not interested in the channel or they have all the creators that they need in the world and don't need anyone else. I don't know what it is, but I do apologize for that. I won't have any type of codes or anything so far because after several weeks of trying to reach out to them, I just get zero response. And they apparently have affiliate programs. I even found it. I tried to apply to it. I've emailed them directly. No response. Now, that said, I still got to tell you guys about this because it's absolutely incredible. So I mentioned before that I was going to get into doing 3D printing and the reasons why in other videos. And I also talked about how a lot of people, some people in that area don't like Bamboo Labs. They're really the leader, I think, in when it comes to 3D printing. There's other great companies out there doing it. They're basically like number one. They are just that good. And when you get one, you kind of realize pretty quickly why they're that good because they're just incredibly user friendly. And the machine just, it, it just works. I have had almost zero prints fail, which is not an uncommon thing in 3D printing, prints fail. In fact, my very beginner 3D printer, which is right below this one, my little Anacubic that I told you guys about, it would fail about 50% of the time, especially when it was doing more complicated tasks. This one, I've only had one print that ever completely failed. I've had it stop one time because it noticed something that wasn't right, but I was able to go in and, and actually cut away. It had some a little bit of stringing that was going on, which can happen for a lot of reasons, atmospherics, moisture in the PLA. Uh, and I was able to take that stringing out and it continued and, and completed the print. What's really amazing to me is just the amount of stuff that's out there that's free for these. And this is, you're starting to see it go into everywhere. And when I talked about 3D printing, that was one of the reasons I wanted to get into is because I read something a few years ago that said, you know, in 10 years, every house is going to have a 3D printer and they're going to be able, capable of doing all kinds of things. And the filaments, we have so many filaments now. And I truly believe that's the case. Just the other week, Tormac came out with a new part for their sharpener to help preserve the water when you're sharpening by basically it's just tilting the machine a little bit, but they made it, they designed these little feet to give it a little bit of an angle so that you don't lose as much fluid. Now I grind dry, so it wasn't a big deal for me, but you guys that use Tormex that do grind wet, that use the Tormex solution, we all know how expensive Tormec anti-corrosion fluid is. So that little fix to help you save that fluid is, is a great idea. What was really neat was Tormac offered it for sale if you don't own a 3D printer. But what I thought was really cool is it was totally free if you do. They offered the file. You can go and download the file and print them yourself if you have a 3D printer. And I'm seeing just more and more of that. When I bought this X1 Carbon from Bamboo Labs, one of the first things I noticed as I started using it, you have to sometimes for certain filaments, they would tell you either leave the door open or the top open to allow the heat to escape. 
because all the filaments are different. Some need to be really hot and everything's closed down. So you can see right now I'm running what's called PETG and PETG is one of those that's the chamber you keep it hot. You don't have to open it up. But when you run PLA, which is a little bit more common, you actually do. They tell you to even leave the door open or open the top. Well, one of the issues was if you have this AMS unit sitting on the top, you can't open the top because it's sitting on the glass and this unit was sitting on the glass. Well, some brilliant person out there came up with this piece right here. They made a piece that you could put on the top to put your glass into and they made these attachments for the AMS unit. And you can see now I can tilt my AMS unit. I can get in here and I can even open my glass and slide it back. So if I'm running PLA, I can just open the glass. Even when this is sitting on there, you can see I can just open it and let the heat out. So I don't have to leave the front door open if I don't want to. And I printed all these parts with this machine and there was no additional parts so that was really cool because i had seen this before but there were ones that you know where you had to add screws and different things and someone literally came up with a design that had zero screws and i just thought that was so awesome and i think it's so neat that you can buy a machine and then you can make parts with that machine to make that machine run better and i'm going to show you a few more of those things so another one that I printed was what they call, believe it or not, the name is a poop chute. So when this thing changes filaments, because you can see I have four different filaments up here, it needs to clear the nozzle. So this has one print head. So if it's going to use a, two different colors or support and then go back to what it was printing, it needs to clear that line. And when it clears it, it shoots the extra out into this little chute and then it loads the new line and then starts printing from there. Now, the newest printer that they have, this H2D, actually has two print heads inside so it doesn't waste as much filament and you don't get as much of this stuff in the back there. Uh, but it's a pretty pricey unit and it's also uh, bigger than this one. So it's taller, wider, and even heavier. The reason I didn't get it was basically because it had a lot of other things. Some people are calling it the Franken printer because it has a laser, it has cutters. And a friend of mine that does a lot of 3D printing, he didn't like the idea that of mixing a laser with a 3D printer because we all know lasers do produce a lot of little particles. And he was like, I just don't like the idea of having all those particles inside my 3D printer. And you know, that seemed to make sense to me. And I decided to go with the X1 Carbon. And man, I'm gonna tell you, I have no regrets. This machine has been fantastic. So I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I've printed in the shop, cause there's a lot of them that I've made all with this machine that have been super helpful for both laser engraving and 3D printing. I've shown you a few there. Oh, here's another one, anti-vibration feet for the 3D printer. So if you have two printers on one stand, they recommend using anti-vibration feet. And you'll just be amazed at how many things are out there that you don't even have to design yourself because people give them away for free. They share their designs and a lot of it's really cool. Here's another example of one of those. This is a fume hood for, or this is a, a fume, I guess, uh, tube for using a four inch wide vent, which is what I use in my shop, especially my Galvos. And you can see I have one right here set up on this tube. And I printed that with the 3D printer. I also printed, these are a little covered up right now, but all of these little fence pieces. Here is also a 3D printed thing for doing metal uh, pet tags, for doing them in bulk. These were 3D printed for holding uh, shields up to protect the laser from anyone uh, seeing the laser. I'm gonna jump down here real quick to my 
Xtool S1, I am doing a engraving job right now of 19 tumblers. And I really love this. So someone made this for the RA2 rotary tool. So this is what tumblers go into. And I'll show you two things I'm doing right now because there's something I just printed about 10 minutes ago for this. And these are the kind of cool things you're gonna come across. So here's my other RA2. As I said, I have two of these. Now, typically this is what you see, which is a rotary chuck design. And you're either clamping a tumbler from inside pushing out or outside grabbing in depending on the size of the tumbler. What I saw was this awesome design that someone came up with where you can make different lids for the tumblers that you have. So you can see I have several different ones down here on the floor. They're different sizes for Yeti tumblers. And I found one that works also. I'm doing a bunch of Stanleys right now. That's what these boxes are here. And what I can do, instead of having to use that chuck, I attach this to the tumbler and this screws in to this green piece and it is perfectly attached and perfectly aligned by doing that. And I don't have to worry about any chucks. I don't have to worry about anything falling out. It's just a brilliant design that someone made and this was free. I didn't have to pay anything for it. It was right there on Bamboo Labs. All I did was search under Xtool F1 Ultra and started going through all the different free designs of things that were out there. I have printed numerous things for all of my different lasers. Lots of fence pieces, different types of jigs, alignment things. I have two full boxes here. This is all ones for my comm marker. And there's just tons and tons of things in here that I have 3D printed. This is one I really love. This is a, uh, I'll show you this one. I actually printed two in black or on the machine up here. But these are fence guides that you can adjust them. I can move them even when they're on here instead of having like a fixed piece of fence, I can just kind of slide this into place. Just really awesome things. Here's another little simple thing that I made for my Omni One. So the Omni One has this nice measurement guide, but it's really hard to see because the, the alignment is with the top of this and there was no like way to, you had to kind of eyeball it and kind of guess where it lined up on this ruler. Someone made a perfect little pointer that just attaches to here and now you can see where that is on your ruler. So some of them are just so simple. And here's the one I just printed 10 minutes ago. I wanna show you that. If you look, I'll bring it, I'm gonna, I printed two of these because I have to do it to both of my rotary tools. I'm gonna to show you this real quick. And this always surprised me when I got my X-Tool rotary. You see these exposed wires here in the back? This is actually how this comes. And that did always concern me, but I never thought about, well, how, how should I fix it or should I fix it? But look what someone came up with. Someone else didn't like that and they made this perfect little piece that snaps together and solves these exposed wires by this will snap right onto here and it has two sides. I actually grabbed the, uh, I grabbed two bases here, but this will snap together and protect that piece to keep you from accidentally ripping or, you know, hurting those wires, which this probably should have been on there from uh, the very beginning, but it's not. And someone very smart out there came up with just that little piece. So there's just no shortage of uses for these 3D printers. And every day I find more and more stuff. And I'll just show you one more. This is one, I, I, one of the first ones I ever did, but it's still going great. When I modified my Grizzly, 
I didn't do the best job of, I should have put this piece on the outside when I welded this and I ended up with an uneven platen here, or I guess angle guy, we should call it. Well, I was able to 3D print this piece of PLA at the exact angle I needed, and I just attached it right to it. And I've been using this like this for months now, and it's, it's great. It's not wearing out, and it also, I don't have to worry about scratching the knife. So like my other sharpeners where I have to put painter's tape on because they're metal, I don't have to do that with this one because the this is made from PLA and it doesn't scratch the knives because it's a it's basically a plastic. You will find just a ton of things that you can use, not just for laser engraving, but even all around your house. So one of the things I recently printed was a floor drain for my basement. I went in to see which types of filaments are waterproof and I printed one and it fits perfectly over a drain cover for my this hole in my basement floor where there should have been a drain and it just kind of rusted out over time and I was able to replace it with a 3D printed one that I found online. You will find a lot of things that you can print. Now I am learning more and more about it. I did finally start to learn how to make some modifications to things on my own, which I'm still no expert on it, but I'll show you one that I did do. My Com Marker Omni One came with two lenses and the bottom of the laser didn't have a lens cap. The top of it did, but the bottom didn't. And I like to have lens caps on any type of lens, both on the top and the bottom. Well, I was able to find one that someone had 3D printed. The first one I made, unfortunately, was the wrong size. I needed to adjust it, but I was able to go in and just shrink it down. It took me two tries. Here's my lens over here in this little bag. But you can see there, see there on the bottom, the protective lens cover I put on there. So I was able to make one for this lens that they only gave me a top lens cap for. And that is a lens that can go on, well, it actually goes on this laser over here, the Omni One. So that, like, there's another example of a jig that you can make. Well, here's a bunch of them. Here's another jig. So here's my business card jig. So you can find all these things online. The m overwhelming majority of them are free. And there are some, and sometimes if you can't find it, you can, there are guys, there are makers out there that do sell their designs. So sometimes you can find them, if you can't find one for free, sometimes you can find one for not that not very much money on a place like Etsy. The person might be willing to sell their design and let you print it yourself. I have had almost no problem finding all free stuff. Everything I have found so far, I have not paid for someone else's design because I've been able to find so many great things out there. And there are lots and lots and lots of 3D printing design spaces that are free like that. And I will list some in the link to this video so that you guys can you know, check those out if you do 3D printing and you want to see what some of these uh, sites are that I've been going to to get some of these designs, but I do get the overwhelming majority of mine Basically through bamboo labs site, but I have used other places I know ones like print universe and there's a bunch of them out there, but that's it I wanted to share that with you. I hope that's informative once again I apologize that I haven't been able to establish any kind of relationship with bamboo labs Maybe, hopefully, in the future, at some point, maybe they will get back to me. But I didn't want to keep this from you. I wanted to share it with you and let you know how happy I am with this particular 3D printer. Have a great day, everybody, and I will talk to you soon.